take a look at this. Uh, oh, hey guys. Yeah, come on in. Uh, you startled me there. I was just gonna, I was just getting ready to tear into this. Uh, someone brought this by. It hasn't run in 10 years. And in this video, we're gonna see if we can make this chainsaw run again. Okay, we got us a little pool in here, pool on. Uh, they call this a wood shark. Uh, I don't see the CC on it uh, on there on the side. The complaint is they tried and tried and it would not start. Uh, we're going to check the obvious stuff first. Uh, there's zero fuel in it. I'm not sure if they tried it with fuel and drained it or what, what they did to it. I'm going to have to look down in here and see if this is a Torx or a... It looks like you can use a slotted screwdriver on it or an Allen wrench. We'll try this because I've got it handy. Go ahead and take this top cover off. Just see what we're what's going on in here. Got to push the brake forward to get that front of that cover off of there. And am I going to be able to remove it without? Yes. Okay. Good. Some of them you have to take this this piece here off this carry handle to get that out of there. But as you can see, there's the spark plug. Get it where you guys can see it a little better. There's the there's the spark plug here. We're gonna go ahead and pull this boot off. And I'm gonna guess that's a three-quarter. Get a place where I can grab it there. Okay. We're just going to take a look at this. Uh, it's a little dirty. It's not too bad. I am going to go ahead and clean it up right quick on the wire wheel before I put that back in. And I also like to run a little anti-seize on these threads because these are real notorious for getting stuck in there. But uh, we'll clean that up in a moment. I tell you, I'm just going to put a little, a couple of drops of three and one down in here to make sure and lubricate this because it's been sitting so long. Give it a good squirt there. And I'm just gonna pull this thing over a few times gently because I don't want to spray that stuff out all over me. Make sure everything feels okay. And I'm also inspecting the rope as I'm going here, making sure that the uh, return mechanism is going well on and working well on the rope. Seems fine. Now I'm just going to put my finger and my thumb over this and see if I can feel compression. Yeah. Okay, the thing's certainly making compression. Now we're going to check spark before I clean this up. Get it into a place where it'll stay there up against the cylinder head, usually what you want to do. Now let's see if we got any spark. Got to have the thing on, on run. So that would be run. I'm going to go ahead and pull the choke out like I'm fixing to start the thing. We're going to see if there's any spark here.
I don't know if you're going to be able to pick that up. It's pretty faint. But I do see spark, so that's a good sign. And also, while I'm in here with the cover off, I'm going to clean all of this out. It's not too bad, actually, in there, but I'm going to, I'm going to clean this cover out and uh, make sure when we put it all back together that this air filter is cleaned out right here and make sure everything's going right on, you know, looks okay on the inside of that. Let's go ahead and pull that out of there. Just a little thin paper air filter here, or actually it's a foam of some kind, synthetic foam. I'll blow this off with a compressor and put a light coat of uh, oil on. Uh, it looks clean inside of there. I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's the choke mechanism and how that works. Okay, that seems to be working fine. Uh, it looks clean enough. I'm not going to worry about spraying carburetor cleaner in there right now. Okay, I got the spark plug all cleaned up. Use the wire wheel for that. Uh, now I'm going to put a little bit of uh, anti-seize around the threads there. Screw it back in. Uh, we're going to go ahead and fill this thing up with fuel. Uh, I'm not going to actually fill it all the way up. I'm just going to put, you know, probably a quarter of a tank in it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and give it a try at that point, but I'm not going to put that top cover back on yet that goes over there because I may need to spray some uh, starting fluid into the throat of the carburetor or some carburetor cleaner if I feel like it's not running right to clean that out. Uh, so we're going to leave that accessible for right now. We're not going to put it all the way back together. Uh, you want to avoid the electrode on this. Uh, you just want it around the threads. Make it easier on the next person that has to take that off of there. Might be you. Always start them by hand on aluminum cylinder heads. They can feel a little weird. As far as when you're starting it in, if you get it off, it can strip out pretty easily. Okay, so we should be done with the never seize, the anti-seize. I'm going to just tighten this up. It doesn't need to be super tight. Just tight enough to get a compression seal on it. Again, you may have to take this off in the future, so we're going to inspect the inside of this. It looks good. A uh, little dielectric grease never hurts anything. Just around here, that helps get that off next time. Okay, heard it click. Everything looks good. All right, I did go ahead and loosen up that bar so I can tighten it up a little bit. This works a little different than mine. The screw is here on the front, right in that area. So we're going to tighten that up a bit. And bring that tension up on that chain a little bit. Now, you don't want it so tight that you can't get any pressure underneath it. You want it to be... That actually feels about perfect right there. You want to be able to pull it up almost, you know, easily pull it up almost enough where the tip will almost come out of there. But it stays tight otherwise. It looks tight. So that's where we're going to leave that. Uh, we'll tighten it down here. And you, you don't need to tighten these up super tight. Just get them good and snug. I've seen guys that really tighten them, over tighten them. That looks good, didn't take long. Chain brakes on. Okay, put that back on. Got our two stroke gas here. I should emphasize it's fresh, fresh two-stroke gas. That's important. A lot of times with these two-stroke engines, if it's full of gas and it just won't start, uh, so you might have bad gas in the thing. That could be a big part of it. So drain all your old gas out, dispose of that properly. Whoa, I put more than I wanted in there. Uh, dispose of that properly and put fresh gas in it. 
Okay, I'm definitely not going to fill it all the way up with bar oil because I'm not cutting wood with it today. I'm just going to put enough in there that has a little in it. That's good to see. I've seen people actually fill these up with gasoline before. That's why I smelled that. It didn't smell like gas, but uh, looked kind of liquidy. Now, in a careful way, I'm going to wipe this dirt around. I'm going to try to wipe it out of that spot there so I don't knock any in. Keep it clean in there. Uh, wipe the knob off also. Now I tighten these up pretty tight, tight as I can get them with my hand because you this tank is uh, this thing if you if you don't have it tight, it'll leak all out on you. And this gas one here, uh, there's no ring seal in there, and if that's not, that seal is not made then the tank won't pressurize and if the tank doesn't these things pressurize the tank that's how they work that's why you have to prime the button six times as you're building up a slight just a little bit of pressure in the tank here so we're going to do that and i'm going to go ahead i did put the filter back in and i'm going to put this cover on there hopefully it'll kind of stay on there uh, probably won't probably fall right off when I start it, but okay. So next up on this type of chainsaw you pull this lever and make sure that When you pull it it automatically pops that up. So you pull this choke lever out all the way and We're gonna go outside and give it a start Good sign Okay, now we're going to push the choke halfway in. I'm going to set to make sure the brake's set. Let it run choked for a minute or so until it sounds like it's going to run on its own. Giving it a little bit of gas here. I'm just kind of feathering that gas. If I think it's going to die, I feather back on it so I don't have to start it over and over again. It hadn't been run in 10 years, so it needs to run for a little while. I'm looking to see if it's slinging any oil out of the chain. So far, it's not. I like to see a little bit sling out when I rev up. running fine. Chokes all the way in. 
I'm just going to let this sit here and run for a while, let it get good and warm, hot even. Uh, I might even go over and cut a couple of limbs with it just to make sure it doesn't bog down whenever I uh, cut into some wood. So stay tuned. I think it's the little things that keep people, your customers, coming back. Example was you saw how dirty this thing was when it came in here. Uh, no one ever asks me to clean them up, but I clean them up every single time. When the customer comes to pick up their tool and they see it's been cleaned up, I didn't, you know, I can't get the scratches out of there, but I wiped everything down. Uh, there's a little spot there I missed. It's just worth it to make it look nice and new again. I, uh, as you saw, I, I went ahead and tightened up that chain for them. But yeah, this little thing cleaned up great. It's practically a brand new chainsaw. Uh, the carburetor looked good. I didn't see any problems inside of there. Uh, throttle, everything felt good. I went ahead and re-oiled the filter, like I said. Light coat of oil. Uh, last thing to do is I've got to blow this uh, top cover off and reinstall it. Do that right now. Let's give it a nice wipe off. Again, it doesn't have to look brand new, but you know it depends on what service you're get, you're providing the customer, what you tell them you're going to do. But most of the time, these neglected chainsaws, there's not much wrong with them. Usually, it's just maybe a little bit of gummed up fuel in the carburetor, and oftentimes you don't even need to use carburetor cleaner. Uh, like this case, uh, I was able to start this one right up. Sometimes they fight you a little more than that, though. And when they do, uh, that's when I use either uh, starting fluid to get it going. Uh, and then once it's running, I'll squirt a little, uh, I prefer the B12 Chem Tool carburetor cleaner, and I'll squirt just tiny bits of that, tiny squirts, inside, dr directly in the throat of the carburetor, and you have to feather the fuel to keep it going, because it'll try to die as you squirt that in there. Uh, but it will clean that out. And you can actually get the engine nice and hot and kill it with the B12 and just let it sit there for a while and that'll kind of that b12 will soak into that carburetor and it'll be hard to start the next time it'll take you several tries you may even have to pull the spark plug out and dry it off because sometimes you'll you'll fat you'll uh, wet the spark plug and then it won't spark uh, you'll, you'll you know you'll flood it by doing that um, now these small engines are you know really any engine uh, that's gasoline combustion engine they, they they operate on some fun basic fundamentals you have to have air flow in air flow out exhaust out you have to have spark you have to have fuel and compression if you have all those things most of the time the engine's going to run and so what i do is i start looking for those things as you saw i checked the spark we had good spark uh, decent spark i would say uh, you know, I looked down the throat of the carburetor. It looked very clean inside of there, so I didn't suspect that was going to be an issue. I think the problem with this was probably just had just been sitting there for so long, and maybe it had a little gum up in the carburetor there in the fuel feed line or something. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, I had no trouble getting it going. And these these uh, small engines, they don't like to be left for long periods of time with two-stroke gas in them. I always run pure fuel. I don't run uh, ethanol fuel unless I absolutely have to, but I never run them in chainsaws and small engines like this because I think you're just asking for problems because these things tend to sit on the shelf for a while in between use and that's the trouble. If you knew you weren't going to use your saw again until maybe next year, I would recommend going ahead and emptying the tank out. Uh, the, the last time you use it, run it dry and just leave it empty. You know, run it out of fuel, and that will help suck any of the fuel out of the carburetor. Uh, but yeah, that's that's my recommendation. That's your best bet on these two strokes, especially uh, to keep them lasting for your long time. You know, and in fact, I've got two of them out there right now, uh, two chainsaws of my own that I need to do the same thing to. So, okay, guys, appreciate you stopping by. Hope this helped you out, and we'll see you next time.